there, welcome back to another Make Science Easy Physics lesson. In this lesson, we're going to be finding out what a force actually is. We're going to be finding out what forces do, and we're going to be finding out a little bit about the difference between a contact force and a non-contact force. So very, very simply then, what are forces? And essentially, a force is a push, a pull, or a twist. It's really that simple. Anything that causes pushing, pulling, or twisting is a force. And forces are always applied when objects interact with each other. So whenever things interact, whenever you touch something, whenever any physical substances interact with each other, you have a force applied. So anytime you have any substances interacting, you have forces. As soon as those interactions stop, then the forces also stop. Now, by interaction, all I mean is that things are affecting each other. So things are in contact or they're making some kind of change to something else. So forces can be described as either a contact force when the interacting objects are touching each other or they can be described as non-contact forces where they interact with each other over a distance. Now that distance can be as small as a millimeter or it can be as long as a thousand million kilometers. It doesn't matter. Anything that is not touching, that is interacting with each other is causing a non-contact force. And forces always exist in pairs and those pairs always act in the opposite direction to each other. And the unit of all forces is the Newton or N. And forces are what we call vectors. So we should know what a vector is by now because all forces have a magnitude, how large that force is. And all forces act in a specific direction. So magnitude and direction is a vector. All forces are always a vector. So let's start off by looking at contact forces. So we've already said contact forces occur when two objects interact with each other when they are touching each other. And the two objects can either push each other or pull each other in the opposite direction. So remember forces always act in pairs and they always act in the opposite direction. So here we can see two people are pulling on this rope. They're in contact with the rope, so this is a contact force. Because they're pulling in opposite directions, the forces, as we can see, are also taking place in opposite directions. But we can also have pushing forces. So here this person is doing a push-up. They are pushing down on the ground but the ground is pushing up on them. So contact forces, either a push or a pull in pairs in opposite direction. Now examples of contact forces include friction, including air resistance and water resistance or tension. So tension is what you get in a spring, essentially, as you pull on that spring, you can see the spring is storing energy. It's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And when you let go, that spring will spring back into place as the tension is released. So as you stretch something, essentially, you put tension into it. And you can also have up thrust. This is a pushing force from something when another object is resting on top of it. So here we can see we have the boat sitting on top of the water. The weight of the boat is being pulled down by gravity and the water is pushing up with up thrust. Now, non-contact forces, as we've already mentioned, are forces that take place when objects interact but are not touching each other. And again, they're either pushes or pulls. And there are two main types of non-contact force. We can have gravitational force, which is weight. So here we can see an example, the Earth is pulling on the moon. The moon is pulling on the Earth. 
they're pulling in opposite directions and they're a pair. Or we can have magnetic force. Here the magnet is pulling on the nails, but the nails are also pulling on the magnet. These forces are in opposite directions and they are a pair. So gravitational force and magnetic force are the two main non-contact forces. There is an electromagnetic effect as well linked to magnetism, but we're not going to worry too much about that for now. So let's have a look at the effect of forces. And forces always have effects on objects. And there are a number of different things a force can do. The main things a force can do is to change the shape or the size of an object. So here we can see this ball is being squeezed and it is changing shape. It can change the speed of an object. So here, the exhaust of the rocket is putting a force upon it and pushing the rocket upwards, causing it to change its speed. Or forces can change the direction of an object as well. So this person in a go-kart is changing direction, they're going around the corner. Now, what's really important is changes only occur if forces are unbalanced. So remember forces act in pairs. A change in shape or size or speed or direction can only occur if those forces are unbalanced. That means if one of the forces is larger than the other force. If forces are balanced, objects essentially behave as if no force is being applied to it at all. There are no changes that take place when forces are balanced. So balanced forces are in equilibrium. Everything stays the same. So let's have a quick look at some unbalanced forces to make sure you understand this. So as we've already said, and this is really, really important, forces always act in pairs. and They always act in opposite directions to each other. So here we've got a cyclist and they're riding along and they are cycling forward with a force of, let's say, 100 newtons. Pushing them back is another force of 100 newtons. This could be friction from the tyres against the ground. It could be air resistance. It doesn't really matter what it is, but there is a force pushing back at 100 newtons. So the forward force and the backward force are the same. It is balanced. If one force is larger than the other, the force is unbalanced. So now the cyclist might be wanting to speed up. So they're now pedaling a little harder. So they're pushing forward with a force of 150 newtons, but the backward force is now lower. It's still only 100 newtons. So we have an unbalanced force. One force is bigger than another. The cyclist who has balanced forces where the forward force and the backward force are the same will remain traveling in the same direction, at the same speed. There will be no changes at all. The cyclist with unbalanced forces will accelerate. His velocity will increase. So because there is an unbalanced force, there is a change that will take place to that object. Balanced forces, no change. Unbalanced forces, changes. Essentially, the forward force, the thrust, is greater than the backward force, the friction between the tyres and the road or air resistance, so his speed will increase. So, unbalanced forces can also, as well as changing speed, as we already know, can change size or shape of an object or its direction. So, any of those changes can occur from an unbalanced force. So, what about balanced forces? Well, here we've got a car and it's got a forward force of a thousand newtons and a backwards force of a thousand newtons. These are balanced. So we already know when forces are balanced, there are no changes to velocity, no changes to direction. Remember, a change in direction will also be a change in velocity because velocity is a vector and there are no changes to shape. If this car is at rest, if it's not moving, it will continue to remain at rest. So when balanced forces act on an object at rest, something that isn't moving, it will continue to not move. 
if balanced forces are applied to objects that are moving, they will continue to move. However, they will continue to move at the same speed, in the same direction. No change to velocity, no change to direction, no change to shape. So balanced forces will never cause any change. Changes only occur if we have unbalanced forces. And this can essentially be summed up with a really, really important law known as Newton's first law of motion. And Newton's first law of motion states, an object remains at rest or continues to move at a constant velocity unless acted upon by a force. So what this means in very simple terms, as long as forces are balanced, there will be no changes. We'll either have no speed if it's already at no speed or constant speed if it's already at speed. If you unbalance the forces, then you have a change in speed or direction. In summary, a force is a push, a pull or a turning force. Forces always exist in pairs and these pairs act in opposite directions. Forces are measured in Newtons. Forces can either be contact forces where they're touching or non-contact forces where the forces act over a distance. Contact forces include friction, tension, which is when you stretch something, and upthrust, which is when an object is placing its weight on something else, and so the object pushes back. Non-contact forces include gravity and magnetism. So when forces are unbalanced, there's a change of shape, speed, or direction. When forces are balanced, there are no changes to shape, no changes to speed, no changes to direction. And this can all be summed up by Newton's first law of motion. An object either remains at rest or continues to move at a constant velocity unless acted upon by a force. So I hope you now know what a force is. I hope you know what a force does. I hope you know how forces can behave in pairs and then we have contact and non-contact forces. I hope you know the difference between a balanced force and an unbalanced force and that you know Newton's first law of motion. Until next lesson, keep on learning.